okay, a good reason not to make a video about David Icke, you end up with loads of third party issues, like, you know, in terms of copyrighted content. So basically, my video, which I uploaded a couple of days ago, I'm going to take that down, edit it, put it after this ramble, and also a video I made about Ashiana Dean as well, ages ago, called The Ponage of Ashiana Dean. I now have third party disputes against that video as well. So yeah, sure, it's not a strike against my account. It's not a, it's not a massive DMCA issue. It's simply old content, which is either not copyrighted or is now public domain. And people are still disputing it because they probably don't like my opinions. So here comes the edit of uh, David Icke is full of shit and the ponage of Ashiana Dean. Enjoy. How easy it is for the few to control the many. One of the main reasons that people are now looking at my books and what I'm saying in a vastly greater number than ever before is because so many of the things that I, I've written about over the years um, are now happening. Really? Maybe we should question this line of bullshit. I said in uh, 1990, we can expect the power and frequency of hurricanes to increase after the millennium. Actually, you predicted a great many things. A psychic message said there would be a severe hurricane around the Gulf of Mexico and New Orleans. Well, guess what? There are lots of tropical storms which go through that region. Sooner or later, one was going to go at least near to New Orleans. The bloodline hierarchy at the top of the human pyramid of control and suppression passes the baton across the generations, mostly sons following fathers. I, George Herbert Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. I, George Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. What you should have predicted there was basically that rich people can even get their idiot son into the most powerful position on the planet. The plan is to engineer events, real and staged, that will create enormous fear in the countdown years to 2012. This includes a plan to start a third world war, either by stimulating the Muslim world into a holy war against the West, or by using China to cause global conflict, maybe both. Of course! The years after the millennium will see gathering conflict all over the world to the point where the United Nations will be overwhelmed. Ow! We have not seen the provocation for World War III or the United Nations being overwhelmed by global conflict. January the 20th, 2001. Don't be surprised if the United States finds itself in another manipulated war during this administration. You will see monsters being created in the public mind to justify such action. Yes, you didn't see that. With the images here, the way you've gone over certain things which are meant to happen, you make the prediction first, a couple of words, a couple of lines perhaps, and then you add in the image of an event which may be vaguely similar to it. That is not a prediction. Between 2000 and 2002, the United States will suffer a major attack on a large city. Of course! But remember how vague his words are. And I would like to know the context of these so-called predictions. I used to be a David Icke fan. I looked into it and looked for the actual evidence. But the fact is, there is no solid evidence for the vast majority of his theories. Well, I started to look at this and you, know, you realize that, as one scientist said, the, the only thing you can safely say about the moon is its observational error. It shouldn't be there. Then you look at the ancient accounts all over the world and they talk about fantastic cataclysmic events which ended a golden age, which ended a whole civilization. Some people talk about Atlantis and the Maori and all that stuff. Tell him. Mm. I don't see why I shoot my child. You'll learn soon enough. Very much symbolized by the Death Star in the Star Wars movies. Star Wars movies, of course, produced by George Lucas, massive insider. And the Death Star in the Star Wars films is based upon the truth of the moon. But that's not proof, is it? Imagination! It's all good and well to try and say, oh, this could have happened. 
or this may have happened, but we need to gather more proof. But instead, David Icke, he selects certain information to try and prove his theories, showing that he is a very sophisticated con man. And I didn't say, hey, hey Credo, I reckon the moon's this, that and the other. I said, can you just tell me um, any African legends about the moon? And he goes on in this story. He says, well, we think the moon's an egg. Just, just it's symbolism, mate, please. I think anthropologists do symbolism very well. But they call it an egg because they say the moon had its yolk taken out. It was an egg that had the yolk removed. It was hollowed out. Of course! So David Icke thinks the moon came here thousands of years ago. Despite the overwhelming scientific evidence, it's been here for much longer. And, and honest scientists will tell you, they have no bloody clue where the moon come from. Come to the city of London, a city within a city. It's more than that, however. It is the centre of a global web of secret societies that control the planet today. And they come uh, from a series of interbreeding bloodlines which you can trace back to the ancient Middle and Near East thousands and thousands of years ago. And that must be true, and absolutely totally true, because... Um, um, sorry, what were we talking about again? Now, we've reached a point here, if we just turn around, uh, of the headquarters of the Global Mind Control Network. This is the Tavistock Institute in Tabernacle Street, 30 Tabernacle Street in London. It was this network, and is this network, that coordinates the mind control program around the world, both on a mass and individual uh, level. Of course! Google it. You will find it is nothing of the sort. And of course David Icke would say, oh yes, it's a, it's a center, it's a hub for mind manipulating people. Kind of like um, a ministry of truth, if you will. Don't just simply assume David Icke is on the ball just because he claims something is true. If you think like that, you're not a free thinker. You're a follower. Nick, it's why you fail. give us food and shelter for the night, he can join us in our quest for the Holy Grail. Hi there guys, I've been told about a particular nut job called Ashana Dean, and she claims to know the truth about 2012, how it's going to work and what's going to happen. This is the alignment that everybody's been trying to figure out what it means we're aligned with Galactic Core. It's actually the alignment of the rods. If you don't know that spinning bodies have rods and chambers, you have no idea. Oh, there's these rods. Rods of energy, which go off in different directions if we cross the wrong ones, and the planets are aligned, and we've aligned with the Galactic Core, and these rods are affected. <gasps> what could happen? Um, nothing. It's about when these, when this frequency comes in here, which, you know, it, it's stationed in there at that, you know, it's actually coming through and kind of hangs there. That's a period that, that rotates very slowly. Sounds fair, except these rods, which you claim, are not shown to exist by any scientific organization. Now, I accept science does not know it all, but since you can't show these rods actually exist, why should we even believe they exist? At December um, 21st, 2012, our rods will cross into this and cross, it, it, it makes a, what's that, a right angle, I think? I don't know my angles well, is this like 90 degree? What's that, a right angle, I think? I don't know my angles well, is this like 90 degree? There is no proof or evidence that they exist. There is no inclination that these rods of rotating energy actually exist and even if they were shown to exist that does not prove your hypothesis that these rods when affected in certain ways are going to have certain effects upon us whether relating to 2012 or any other time where the solar rod made more powerful by the frequencies they're going to blast through here because what they're going to do different here than when this alignment usually occurs is they are opening what's called the Prosiac Black Hole Center. That's something called a Moshoko Domazata. And they are going to beam in frequency from the parallel side for the final kick. And that kick will send a 
powerful frequency burst through here through the solar gates that will hit our rod as it crosses over and that will make it spin which you spin that rod it's going to spin the whole thing and actually part of it because they're actually already on a spin in the opposite direction part will spin one way and part will spin the other and it would snap the crust and it would be like you know within three day roll and everything gone frontal assault begins in 15 realms pseudo scientific bullshit and because they're only interested at this point before there was some takeover games and let's play with it for a while and evolve with the dna but at this point the the big guys are only interested in the quantum of energetic food that could be drawn in they don't even want to play with the little guys like it's way beyond just the anunnaki and the draconians anymore oh oh she, she's been told by the aliens it's true yeah she's been told by spirits communication it's yeah this is multi-matrix warfare that is happening here And uh, we got all sorts involved that were not even in the Voyager's books. We didn't even know about them then. They told us as on a need-to-know basis, by the way, we have Borgia now. But by the way, we have Thetans now. By the way, the Thetans are from parallel Earth. Yes, they were part human and part something else over from parallel. And they invaded here 75 million years ago as well, right, and tried to take over the planet then. So it's very interesting. And it's like everybody's represented on, on Club Universe Earth right now. And they took these people in boxes and so forth and they dumped them and then they set off hydrogen bombs on the top of each primary volcano the souls of those aliens however lived on and all floated up towards the sky but the evil lord xenu had prepared for this whoa, 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 whoa. xenu didn't want their souls to return and so he built giant soul catchers in the sky the souls were taken to a huge soul brainwashing facility which xenu had also built on earth there, the souls were forced to watch days of brainwashing material, which tricked them into believing a false reality. Xenu then released the alien souls, which roamed the earth aimlessly in a fog of confusion. The souls finally found bodies which they could grab onto. They attached themselves to all mankind, which still to this day causes all our fears, our confusions, and our problems. The term Thetan comes from the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, who died in 1986. He basically came up with the term Thetan to mean literally a spirit being. So a spirit or a soul equals a Thetan. Therefore, a Thetan coming from a different dimension is basically a spirit. It's the, the, the level of technology involved in this is just, in my mind, mind blowing. It's like, oh my god, you know, what kind of consciousness are we dealing with here? You know, our scientists look like little kindergartners by comparison. That power would set me up above the gods! At this point, we have to say that, that this is not going to happen, and why? It's not going to happen because of what the Guardian groups are doing to intervene. If it weren't for the intervention of the Mashayahanic groups that are the ones from the Aquarian Matrix that are already the Adashi Adepts that have gone through the, the Christar, you know, um, transfiguration. All right, this is gonna happen, that is gonna happen, all these things are going to happen. But hang on, I've got a, well, a kind of a way of getting out of it, a cop-out clause. Which is basically, if nothing does happen, I've told you that this is in the way of it, this might prevent it. But also, there's these guardian groups, oh yes, guardian groups and such, who basically will try and prevent it. So therefore, those guardian groups, if nothing major happens, must have been the ones responsible for nothing major happening. And therefore, I am right again. Who believes this bullshit? It's the end. Well... And it was... it was all just a dream. A dream. David Icke and Ashiana Dean never existed. Oh. Ah. 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 Breathe easy. It was all just a terrible nightmare. <laughs>